Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. This is Jason Butt with the UGASports.com Quick Take. I'm sure some of y'all are still uh, relishing and feeling good after that win uh, Georgia had last uh, Saturday over uh, the Tennessee Volunteers, 27-13. But, of course, now it's time to turn the page. You know this Georgia football team has done the same. And uh, to steal a phrase from uh, the uh, Spygate in Chief Bill Belichick is on the Mississippi State. Uh, this is a, a team that I don't think Georgia, you know, will be overlooking, but it's also one of those games where uh, when you're coming off such a high, you, you as a coaching staff, you have to make sure that these players and, and even some of the fellow assistants, the younger assistants, that they avoid a letdown, that they avoid feeling a little too good about themselves. Maybe some of those teaching moments uh, that happen against Tennessee. Like, for instance, if I'm Kirby Smart and or if I'm uh, – I really, if I'm in that DB room, what I'm doing is saying, okay, yeah, you guys did good here and there. Look at this play where, where you know, was it like 11 or, or or five where they got behind the defense. Look at this play. Look at this play. And, you know, make sure you point that point out that, you know, Tennessee was close on a couple of those big, on a couple of those big passes. Of course, they fell incomplete. The pressure uh, on, on at least, uh, what, two or three of those uh, got to Hooker to where, um, you know, he probably wasn't as accurate as, as he could have been. But, you know, I think more than anything, you point out that as as close to a uh, you know, I wouldn't say this game that game was as pro- close to perfect by any means, but for as great as that team played on Saturday, uh, there's still a lot more that they can clean up. And Mississippi State, when you really focus on Georgia's defense, you know, Mississippi State, uh, it's the Mike Leach offense. We all know what Mike Leach wants to do. He's going to throw the ball. He's going to throw the ball. Probably not going to run the ball, and then he's going to throw the ball. And just throw out some stats here. Um, you know, when it comes to uh, passing offense, you know this uh, you know th- this Mississippi State team is second in the SEC, only behind Tennessee at 325.6 yards per game. Uh, Georgia coming in right behind them at 320.2. But it, it's interesting because you know, for as much as they throw the ball, of course, uh, you get down to uh, you know you know how does Mississippi State run the ball? Last 80.67 uh, in the in the SEC. When it comes to uh, you know putting the ball on the ground and or not putting the ball on the ground, but running the ball, I should say, uh, you know, in, in this conference, so uh, they're going to pass. They, they're really not, uh, you know, they are a one-dimensional offense at this point. And so, if you are Georgia, you know, I, I think I think this is an easy game to to come in and say, okay, we got this. You know, kind of like Missouri in a way, where you're going on the road. It's not going to be a friendly environment. Uh, the cowbells are going to be out. And you you have to you have to really remind yourself that hey this is any given Saturday this team can still play ball uh, there you know it's it's kind of like to me this is a obviously Mississippi State is a better team than Missouri and that's really why you have to to keep your guard up and uh, you know avoid avoid the letdowns uh, you know Will Rogers uh, you know pretty good quarterback he's having a, he's having a decent year uh you know 2912 yards 26 touchdowns five interceptions uh it, it, you know they're running back dylan johnson uh, averaging 5.7 yards a carry but they still really just aren't getting much on the ground nor do they have the volume they just don't want to run uh you know they have a couple of receivers um you know uh, rara tom rara thomas and caleb ducking uh th- those guys uh, rufus harvey you know they got some guys they can spread the ball out to um you know we'll see uh We'll, we'll we'll see what this Georgia uh, defense can do. I imagine it'll be something similar where uh, they play man on the outside and they do everything in their power to keep the plays in front. Let Mississippi State get some empty yards, hold them to field goals, get some th- get some uh, fourth down stops, you know, midfield whatnot, um, and and keep it moving. And on the offensive side of the ball, uh, you know, we've all talked about Georgia's uh, uh, you know offense, which is. Probably not getting as much attention as it should because it's it's not in the same kind of explosive light as say Tennessee. They are a much more balanced unit, yet they're still putting up crazy numbers. Uh, you know, we're, we're we're talking what like 500 yards a game and and, and so forth. But uh, you look at at Mississippi State's defense, and um, you know against the run, uh, they are middle of the pack, 150 rushing yards a game. Against the pass, middle of the pack, 210 yards per game through the air. Uh, so, you know, six in the SEC when it comes to total defense, 360.8 yards per game. Uh, definitely not as bad of a secondary as Tennessee, but this team can be had. 
Georgia has every statistical advantage just at the, um, you know, we're not getting into the super analytics. I'm not going to bore you with, uh, with all that nerd stuff. But uh, th- th- this matchup screams uh, Georgia winning big. But that only happens, especially on the road, against a capable opponent with, you know, a 6-3 and three team. Not bad. I mean, yes, uh, games against Alabama and LSU, they couldn't uh, – they their offense died. But, you know, this is a capable team. So Georgia coming off that high, they got to do everything in their power to avoid a letdown. Uh, again, if I'm that coaching staff, I am harping on every mistake I can find in that game. And, and just drilling uh, into especially the young defenders. I think the offense will ultimately be fine. They got a veteran quarterback who's won a national title. I don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily think you have to worry about a letdown game from that guy, especially with how he was after, um, you know, uh, how, how he was in the immediate aftermath of last week's win over Tennessee. Offensively, you're probably okay in the department. Defensively, uh, you know, I'm harping on. I'm harping on making sure that uh, those, those defenders know that there were a couple plays that could have swung the momentum. Uh, in Tennessee's favor and, and make and drilling the importance of not having a letdown type of performance. And lastly, before I go, what a major difference Jalen Carter makes. Just want to point that out again. When you have that kind of interior pass rush, it makes a world of difference. All of a sudden, the interior linemen have to focus in, freeze up the edges, and then you can start blitzing and getting guys like Javon Bullard on the edge timing up blitzes. Tremendous performance by the defense last week. They're going to have to do it again to ensure that the, the Mike Leach offense doesn't go bananas against this Georgia defense, which would be unexpected based on what we've seen to date so far in the 2022 season. And yesterday I went pretty long. We're going to keep it short and simple today. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And um, I said that like I'm quitting. No, I'll, I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> it's It's been fun. Uh, if you haven't, uh, you know, please mash that uh, subscribe button, like this, uh, go to the UGA sports.com dog vent, subscribe there. Best community for UGA football fans on the internet. Uh, again, thank you so much. You have been awesome. I've been Jason, but you guys take care and have a wonderful day.